we're going to move over to our Black History Month selection, ladies and gentlemen. This is where our, our, our guru, our champion for black history and enlightenment, Tony Crossbody, shares with us uh, his knowledge as regards to some of the greater findings of, of the journey of our people of African and Caribbean descent. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure. Please, ladies and gentlemen, one more time for Tony Crossbody. What have you got for us? Uh, what have you got for us? Uh, well, tonight, you know, I thought um, I'd mix in a little science um, with history, uh, just to mix it up a bit. So if we could just have the first slide, please. Well, there we go. First slide, thank you very much. So tonight, basically, I want to discuss the, um, the science called cranium craniometry. What craniometry. is craniometry? Next slide. Craniometry is actually the study of skull size. Okay. Now, when anthropologists actually find a skeleton, they are able to confirm the racial origin of that skeleton based upon size of skull. Mm. So, as okay. you can see here. They're using calipers to actually measure measure the, the the width and the length, and by dividing both numbers, uh, the answer to that to that that sum makes them decide which category of skull that person would be, right? Okay, so, I'm with you. I'm with you. Right. So the category that we want to talk about tonight. Next slide is this category here. It's called Dolicocephalic. All together. Dolicocephalic. Right. Got that. Good. So this is a very interesting category. Um, and we'll just play this next video um, and talk about it a little bit more. Right, so yes. basically yes. that, you would have seen that already, and I think as Donna Ben pointed out, and I've mentioned already on this show, when this first came to light, mm. people were up in arms by suggesting that this guy could not be black because he had blue eyes. And even the narrator suggested that that, that that was an issue. And actually it's not an issue. Black people do have blue eyes, right? It's not, it's not, it's not uncommon at all. But what's interesting about that in connection with what we're talking about, which is mm -hmm. dolicocephalic. Dolicocephalic. Right, next slide. I want to show you something here. Right, so if you look at where I've underlined it, mm -hmm. okay, so the dolicocephaly or dolicocephalic was the distinctive cranial feature of the earliest inhabitants of Europe. Europe. But notice this today. It is a characteristic of the Negro races. Of the mm. Negro race. So a dolicocephalic skull, when found, is immediately identified as being Negro. And mm. I want you to remember this. Well, this is why we're looking at this particular category of skull. Okay? Now, next slide. Here's, an interesting, here's some interesting information with regard to the British Isles. Mm -hmm. Long after Cheddar Man, who's, who's assumed to have been here from about 7,000 BC, when the Romans first came to these islands, they met a set of people who they called the Silures. Mm -hmm. And at the bottom there, the last part, notice how it describes them. The Roman historian Herodotus says that the Silures have swarthy features and are usually born with curly black hair. They are like the Gauls, the Gauls are the French, mm -hmm. or the Spaniards. So what we're trying to establish here is, is, is this fact that dolicocephalic skulls have been found all over Europe, and they were here long before anybody else. These were the original Europeans and the original British and, and Irish peoples and Scottish peoples. That's interesting. 
also there as well, Tony, it says that this is from his origins uh, or and the deeds of the Goths as well. So, right, right. You know, so it's, it's quite interesting that there's so many different fractions where you can see that the template is and the origins are of black people. Right. And, and you know, the, the biggest lie in the con you see um, that has been perpetrated on the world is that whenever you see anyone black, they must be from Africa. They can never be indigenous to yeah. Europe, to Asia, or to any other, other continents. Well, you see and what the thing... Sorry, Tony, the, the thing that you're, you're highlighting here, which, uh, you know, it's, it's just come to me, is that this all makes sense now, why racism is really a modern-day problem. Mm. And that, they were, you know, they were, when you look at the history of racism, it stemmed from a specific point in time that there is no racism mentioned before that. And that's because we were, we were everywhere. Right, Originally. right, but they, but there seems to be um, a concerted effort. Mm. Right, once the once the once the continents were taken over, there seems to be a concerted effort to wipe the name of black people out of history completely. Right, yeah, and to do that successfully, the place they started with was Egypt. Right, they started with Egypt because if they can pull and extract Egypt out of Africa, they can pull everywhere else. Mm. Let's run this next one. I'm loving the knowledge you're dropping here, Tony, man. I'm loving this bit, man. Who came to the study of ancient Egypt and ancient Nubia from the perspective of Semitic languages, or the study of the Hebrew Bible. And it was very important to them to bring Egypt specifically into the sphere of, of biblical studies. And so they had to carve Egypt away from Africa to bring it into that sphere. And the way that they did that was they used race. So these early archeologists effectively made ancient Egypt white in the sense that they made it part of a dominant Western culture. And ancient Nubia was separated from that, it was black. And this was how they took Egypt out of Africa and put it into this, this Semitic sphere, this biblical sphere. And it's only in recent decades. Right, so they, 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 they have mission, you see. There is the admission that they had to pull Egypt out of Africa because they held Egypt as high esteem and sort of foundation of Western society. And this is why when Napoleon's men first arrived there, obviously they, they dealt with the noses of many of the statues, um, so they couldn't be identified. And so you have this um, pattern of behavior, um, both in the sciences and in the history, where black people are nowhere to be seen. But in reality, as we'll get to discover, black people are actually the center of all civilizations and all the great religions. So that was talking of that, that video was talking about Egypt. I want to now pull up something that's, that might interest you, Mr. C. Um, something mm -hmm. from the Jewish. No, no, actually, no, no, not yet. Let's pull up that, um, the, um, the next slide. Let's pull the next slide. Right, just to remind you again. So, dolicocephalic, mm -hmm. right? Is a is a is a term in reference to Negro skulls, right? Another term is either long-headed or bigged, right? Mm -hmm. It is specifically referring to Negro skulls. Next slide. Now this is where it gets really interesting. In the Jewish encyclopedia, right? Mm -hmm. In the Jewish encyclopedia, they talk about the ancient Hebrews, right? Now, of course. The Jews are, are known as a Semitic people, right? That's right. So Semitic named after Shem, who was one of the three sons of Noah that came out of the ark, right? Mm -hmm. So they're called Semitic, right, after Shem, right? And notice that it identifies all Semitic scale skulls. If you can see that there on your screen, underlined, it says all Semitic skulls are doliko cephalic. Mm, the pure Semitic skull is diso. Right. 
So the what is the leucocephalic skull is Negro. Therefore, mm. is Negro. Wow. Right? Going a little further down, looking where I've underlined it again, um, it says that if the ancient Hebrews were of the same stock as the modern non-Jewish Semites, right, mm -hmm. and modern Jews are their descendants, then a pure dolicostephalic type of head would be expected among the Jews. Mm -hmm. It's saying, it's saying, well, look, if the ancients, the ancient Hebrews, are dolicostephalic, which is black, which is Negro, mm -hmm. then you should find the same connection with the modern day Jews. Right. But the article goes on to say that that is not what you find. Mm. So there's mm. a problem. The ancient people are not connected to the modern people who claim that heritage. See, the ancient Jewish or the ancient Hebrew skulls are Doliko cephalic. The modern day Jewish skulls are not Doliko cephalic. And this is from their own writings. I'm not making this up. You can check this for yourself. This is in the JewishEncyclopedia.com. In the JewishEncyclopedia.com. So if they are telling you that the ancient Hebrews, they're telling you the ancient Hebrews are black, they are also Semitic, and the implication is that. They are not. Boy, I'm mean, going to rub my dollar so you know. What? <laughs> this knowledge you're dropping today, sir. Why, yi, yi. So that, that, that's, from, that's, that's from their own writings, right? Mm. So this is not from some dodgy YouTube website or some, somewhere where we just made up. They are themselves saying it, that the ancient Semitic peoples are dolicocephalic. Dolicocephalic are Negroes. And they have found that there is no connection between the modern day peoples and those who were delicocephalic. So what we're looking at here are two different sets of people. The ancient people by bloodline and a modern day people, but they don't have the same skulls. Now skulls never change, they actually never change throughout history. So delicocephalic style skull remains delicocephalic. Yeah. Next slide. So in a book, again, um, entitled The Jews, A Study of Race and Environment, right? It points out, right, that the skulls of most of the Sephardim. Now, the Sephardim were Jews who were living in Spain and Portugal, mm -hmm. right? particularly in the Middle Ages, right, before they were driven out by the Portuguese, right? It says that the skulls of most of them are what? Dolicocephalic. What is dolicocephalic? Negro. So the, the Sephardim Jews, the original Sephardim Jews, are blacks. Oh. All right, so I want you to, you can do some research on this yourself. Dolicocephalic. Which, which racial group are dolicocephalic? And in their own writings, they're telling you the leucocephalic are the original Semites, are the original Hebrews. Next which slide. Makes sense. Which makes sense, really, because Spain and Portugal are so close to Africa anyway. So, so, so the question, close. The question is, who are these people? Mm. See? Who are these? They, have themselves, they, they themselves have defined what Semite is. So, in, in fact, when black people suffer from racial abuse, it's actually us that are getting anti-Semitic quotes. Mm -hmm. it's, it's us that are suffering from anti-Semitism. Because their own writings confirm that the ancient Semites are dolicocephalic, which is Negro. Yeah. And we'll leave it, that for, we'll leave it there for today. Well, well, it proves the point, like what one of the youngers was saying about uh, Wiley, that Wiley cannot be anti-Semitic because he is Semitic. That's the point. That's the point. See, and the thing is, we're just, we're, when, when we're doing this type of searching out, you've got to use, you know, their own references. Mm -hmm. you see, right? 
because that's the way it has the credibility. They've done the research. But invariably, they often don't realize what they're writing until it's found, you see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the same, like, like, same like what we saw there with Cheddar Man, that they were surprised that right. he was black. Right. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, nobody's thinking of making the connection between dolicocephalic skulls and Negroes. Yeah. So but they could write in the encyclopedia. Yes, the, the ancient Semites were dolicocephalic. Who's going who's gonna, to who's gonna find that out? But the thing is, Tony, that I think that what we've got, we've got two sections of, of, of historians or researchers where you've mm. got those who have, you've just shown us who, you know, they find out the truth or find out their findings and they share it. And then you've got those who find things out and they bury it forever. So, uh, you know, again, when they did their excavations and their, their disrespectful digging up in Egypt, there was lots of things found which are, will never be ever revealed to the world because the tr the, there's so much truth which will, be, which will be exposed, so much lies which will be exposed and so much truth which will be uncovered. So yeah. that's where some things are in the deepest vaults of the British Museum, never to be seen uh, yeah. ever again. And Britain has got a history of, uh, again, destroying uh, certain things as well. Well, Western society has got a history of just destroying as you said, what Napoleon did with the noses of certain artifacts in Egypt. Right. Um, but again... And also faking paintings and faking stat and faking yeah, statues yeah, on yeah. an industrial scale. Yeah. I think what we have available right now um, gives us enough of an insight into the contribution that black people have made to the world since its very foundation. Um, so, and it, it, I would only encourage parents along with their youngsters and their grandchildren to sort of just look up a few of these things um, on YouTube. You can find them. Um, I said, mm -hmm. Dolly is a very interesting study in itself. But this is the scientific angle we take. We can look at the history, we can talk about dates, but you can't go around the science. You can't go around the skull. And, who, and, and that is a sure way of identifying a people. Mm -hmm. There we have another wonderful, wonderful history lesson from uh, Tony Crossbody, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, what a fantastic way to conclude this week's What A Week live show here, only here on Media Net Live TV. Um, please, please, please share this information with your family members, especially the youngers, especially the elders as well, because they need to know this thing, these things. Um, so again, please, 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 uh, we, 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 we ask you kindly, like, subscribe and share. But most importantly, catch us again next week on What A Week live show, only here on Media Net Live TV. Uh, final words, Tony. Oh, uh, history is a beautiful thing um, when things get dug up. It's a beautiful thing. Oh, uh, uh, oh, so one thing. Jackie Dawkins says, if you look again at the picture of the Jewish men at the end of the chat, the headgear they wear uh, and the beards resemble a man of darker skin. That's a very good point. It could be something in that where they're trying to reconnect with their original with the original roots of the Semites. Very good, very good. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Everybody who's joined in the chats from Carolyn, Jackie Dawkins, Denise Francis, uh, Colin Allen, so many, so many more. We thank you, thank you, thank you for, for your continued viewership, membership. But most importantly, we'll catch you here next week. I've been Mr. C. Tony Crossbody. We'll catch you next week. What are we? What are we?